All right, for this video, I am going to show you how to do needle turn applique. And I've got one side that's already done. And as you can see, I'm not a super pro at this. So I'm still learning the process, but getting a little bit better. Curves can be a little tricky, um, but uh, you know, it's worth a try. Maybe see if you like it or, or not, never do it again. Um, so first of all, I have um, my template down, or I have my piece that's cut from the template. So I traced it on the wrong side, and then you cut um, a quarter inch to an eighth inch, kind of error on the thicker side, um, and then um, so you trace it and then cut just past the tracing lines. I don't have an edge to show you, but it would be, you know, I traced it on the wrong side and then cut beyond that tracing and then placed it um, on my background piece of fabric. So after I place on my background piece of fabric, I'm going to glue it. Um, you can use a glue stick or you can use a glue stick or I've tried uh, June Taylor's fabric glue pen recently and this one is pretty slick it's got the um, glue tip on the one end that makes it go um, larger or smaller and then it's a purple tip and um, you don't have to press really hard so basically it's a glue stick but it's in a in a pen application it's really quite handy and slick um, I really like this one and this one's new to me the other glue stick that I've used before is the Super Stick by Thermoweb, and this one is um, actually really fat. So it covers a lot of surface, which is nice, and then you can twist it to move the glue um, area up. And then um, I usually just run it along the edge. A regular glue stick works as well, or Roxanne glue, which is a little bit more permanent. But those are the two that I recommend, and the links will be in the description for the video. So now that I have my um, my piece glued temporarily down and just to secure it to the background fabric, I'm going to turn it over and um, I'm going to trace once again the template on the back side of the backing fabric. And what this does is it lets me know, first of all, where the um, fabric is going to be sitting on the other side. <clears throat> as well as it's going to become a guide for my stitching line. And so I've taken a needle and thread with a, um, just a random color of thread. That way you can see it on the back side of your fabric. So um, I traced it with, you can either use block, uh, blue chalk pen um, or a white chalk if, you, if it's a darker fabric or just a... Um, uh, Mechanical pencil works great as well. So you're not ever going to see this because it's on the wrong side of the fabric. So don't worry about that um, showing. So anyways, I'm going to trace the template onto the wrong side of this. If you need, you know, this was easy because the template lined up along the edge of the background piece. If you need to, you can use a um, light box to shine through and then you can trace your pieces in the correct place. So I know now have this, uh, the fabric is glued to the one side. I've traced and stitched, and the stitching is going to go through both the fabric and the background. Um, and get, we're gonna use this to um, help us stitch. So what I'm going to do is grab my needle and thread, and I'm going to quickly make a quilter's knot at the one end. There's a full video tutorial on how to do that. I also, if you notice, have a little dot on the end of my finger. I don't know if it'll focus on that one. Um, this is by J Jill Lilly, and I really like it because sometimes I get holes in my fingers and so um, from pushing the needle, so this helps prevent that. There's a couple other kinds as well. Um, there's Thimble It, which is, um, they have some with felt, they have some that are um, leather. So you can, there's multiple products out there. There's some that are clear, clear like little plastic um, 
you know, films that you put on the end of your fingers, or you can cut them and make them the size that you need wherever, depending on where you like to put them. But I usually wear it on my third finger um, and right where the needle usually pokes backwards and gets me good. Okay, so this is how you're going to start um, with this process. I'm going to remove a couple of the stitches that I've made. And then I'm going to turn, I'm going to remove one more here so I can get a good edge to turn under. So I'm going to um, take my needle and kind of with one hand I'm going to hold the background fabric down. Okay, I zoomed in here. So with one hand, I'm going to hold the background fabric down. The other, I'm going to hold the needle kind of in position right under where that stitching line was and then um, get that edge to fold under. So I'm gonna play with it for just a minute and get it to go. What the stitching from previous, um, the stitching line that you made previously actually helps this fabric. It kind of gives it a place um, to fold and bend and um, it helps along the way. So I'm going to go ahead and do a, a little stay stitch right here at the end. I know I have a uh, knot in there, but I'm going to go ahead and do another one anyways. Um, I don't know why I'm getting a loop there. Must be a extra piece of thread there. Okay or the back side of the knot. So this is where I'm going to start and I'm going to put my needle down into the back side. Let me get it so it focuses here. So I've come into the, the foundation or the back side of the fabric and then I'm bringing my needle up just right along that edge, just catching that edge just a little bit. Then I'm going to pull the thread. Don't mind that little loop, sorry. I'm going to move my finger. I'm going to keep my thumb in that position right there to hold that um, edge down. Again, I'm going back to the back side, and then my needle will be coming up right along that edge again. And then push the thread through. You'll want to hold it or um, pull the thread just a little tight. You don't want to pucker it, but it does need to be tight enough that it will stay. Again, I'm just going to repeat this process until I kind of get to the end of where my fold is and I don't have any more fabric there. So I'm going to put this back down again. So what I want to do now is remove another stitch or two, just depending on how close your stitches are and stuff. And then I'm going to take my needle, I'm going to hold my back side again, and then I'm going to push with my needle the fabric down. And it's going to, again, just follow along my stitching line from before. So I'm going to play with it just a little bit until I get it nice and smooth how I want to. I'm not going to be stitching right next to this area at the end, so it's okay if it's not perfect for right now. I'm going to hold it down with my thumb in place. I'm going to grab the back of the thread or the back fa background fabric and then make a stitch to the top and pull it through again. When I'm going down to the background fabric, I am going right where my thread is coming up. So, if you can see my thread is coming up right here, so my stitch is going to be right above it. The blue thread kind of it gets a little bit lost here, but All right, so I'm to this to the edge again, so I need to pull that just a little bit tight. Remove another thread. Get that red thread out of the way. Take my needle, kind of play with that edge and push it back under again. It's the same process throughout the whole um, piece. You're just going to continue going along the edge. I'm going to take another thread. I'm, I'm going to make this go just a little bit longer this time. 
You don't want to remove too many stitches at a time because then um, you know the fabric gets a little bit um, lazy and doesn't keep tucked under. You're not using any glue, you don't have any stabilizer that's fused, so you don't want to pull that stabilization out too early. Also, if you get a nice edge and it's really not behaving, you can hold it down with your um, needle and then um, use your fingertip to kind of press it down. You don't want to stretch anything out, but um, if you get a good a good push with your um, the finger's edge, you should be able to hold it in place. Okay, so I'm going down and I'm going to pick up just a couple threads on the edge. and repeat the process until I get to where I need to move the, take some stitches out again. It's nice to have something that sits a little higher on your lap so you can see the area that you're working with. Um, sometimes a table is nice because you have something solid underneath, but I know a lot of people who do this kind of hand work just on their laps. So just work with it and um, you'll eventually find a process that you like. So you continue until you get to, I'm gonna turn it around. You're gonna continue the process and see I've got little little areas that aren't quite smooth um, or perfect, but I, I'm okay with that. I'm still learning, so um, there's some that are better than others. When you get to um, the valleys, um, you're going to find that you're going to have really very few threads right here. So what makes it nice is to have matching thread to your fabric that you're appliquing. That way, if you need, you can take a couple extra stitches here to fill it in so it doesn't look like it's um, thread barren or that you're missing any threads when you stitch it down. But I do kind of go straight down in there and catch that edge. Otherwise, sometimes you have like little threads that stick out because they're a raw edge right there. Um, you're going to have to just play with it on the curves and also in the valleys. But once you get the hang of it, you can move along pretty quickly. Um, so that is the process that I use for needle turn applique. If you've got any comments or questions, leave them in um, the description area or I've got links in there as well for more tutorials and videos. Thanks for watching.